During World War II, the United Kingdom required substantial amounts of food, raw materials, and war supplies to be transported to it from all parts of the world, including across the Atlantic Ocean. Now, initially, the UK had enough merchant ships to transport all of these goods, but later in the war, even after the merchant navy had been supplemented by ships from Norway and other occupied countries, these ships were being sunk in substantial numbers by German submarines or U-boats. The ships were being escorted from convoys across the ocean, giving them some protection from attack, but replacements of the vessels that were being sunk were urgently required, and the standard shipbuilding techniques couldn't match the demand for new ships. To meet this demand, a new type of ship and a new method of construction was created. These came to be known as Liberty ships. They were mainly constructed in American ports to British basic design, which then modified by the Americans. Ships were coal-fired since coal was readily available. The hulls were welded together rather than using the conventional method of riveting. This form of construction enabled women with no previous experience of shipbuilding to be rapidly trained in construction. This construction method also enabled ships to be constructed from prefabricated sections in a little over a month using mass production techniques similar to that pioneered in the motor vehicle industry. However, there were some problems with the quality of the ships as the hulls occasionally cracked in cold waters of the Atlantic. But the speed of construction meant that those issues that did arise with the ships were easy to overlook due to the need for both the vessels and the cargo they could deliver. Ships were also equipped with a small naval gun intended for use against surface submarines, a small number of anti-aircraft guns, as well as cargo winches to aid in rapidly loading and unloading of the ships. The Liberty ships did occasionally find themselves in the middle of a conflict, with one of the Liberty ships, the SS Stephen Hopkins, sinking the far more powerful German commerce raider, the Steer, though the Hopkins was also sunk in the same combat. However, the most well-known Liberty ship is probably the SS Richard Montgomery, however it had less glorious history than the Hopkins did. In 1944, Montgomery was transporting explosives from America to the UK, much of them in the form of high explosive 2,000 pound and 1,000 pound bombs. The ship was anchored temporarily in the Thames estuary, waiting for a convoy to form up to take the cargo to France. The ship was at anchor, she moved dragging the anchor as she ran aground on a sandbank in Thames Estuary near Sheerness. Now at this stage it was an attempt to unload a ship, but the next day the tides changed and Montgomery's hull cracked and flooded, just leaving the mast and the very top of the cargo winches above the water. Now, the wreck of the Montgomery has proved a hazard to ships navigating the Thames Estuary ever since. There have been various surveys of the ship and plans to what to do with the dangerous cargo, but any attempt to unload the cargo could result in the cargo exploding, and the position in the Thames would mean that a huge number of people would be affected if it were to explode. Some estimates saying there are over 1,000 tonnes of potentially still viable explosives on the ship could result in around a million windows in the area being shattered. In addition, a large wave could be produced from the explosion, which would flood some parts of London. However, the hull of the ship continues to deteriorate, and if the structure as a whole collapses, that in turn could also trigger off an explosion. So leaving the ship as it is no longer appears to be a viable long-term solution and something will have to be done about the wreck sooner or later.